Hello, this is gonna be a short presentation on how to write an effective policy paragraph. I'm gonna draw heavily off Andrew Pennock's book and also mix in some other concepts that um, I think you should know and will help you structure your paragraphs. Okay, to start off, policy writing consists of thinking and communicating, each of which sharpens the other, according to Andrew Pennock. The point here is that Writing in a policy context is a little bit different than writing in a typical academic or journalistic or creative context. And the reason is, is that we want to be as clear as possible, as concise as possible, and cause the reader to do the least amount of work to understand the points that we're trying to bring across. So the point that Penix emphasizing here is that good writing comes from clear thinking. And at the same time, trying to write down your thoughts can help you clarify your thoughts. There's two, real, there's two main things you need before you sit down to write. So the first is an outline. An outline provides a map of where you're planning to take the reader, where you're trying to go. And even if you're just writing a paragraph or two, you want a prompt. A prompt is a topic or jumping off point or question that you're trying to answer. You want to have that clear, and I like to put it on the page that I'm, I'm writing on so it's right in front of me and I know I'm responding to the prompt or outline that is um, appropriate for the assignment I'm working on. The other thing that I love to have nearby is the facts or research, which I'm going to use to provide the detail about the topic I'm going to cover. So if you're using the map metaphor, the uh, outline is kind of your roadmap and the facts or research provide the terrain that you're going to take the reader over. And you know, just a tip, I like to use an external monitor hooked up to my laptop. I like to have my notes on one side or my outline on one side and then the document I'm writing on the other side so I can quickly tack between them without having to move a lot of windows. Okay, since uh, Grace has created a video on outlining your, your policy response, your policy argument, I'm not going to say much more about that here, except to say that it's a prerequisite for writing a good, clear paragraph. Looking at paragraphs for a second, the structure that we can use to clarify our essay or our um, section is also important to bring out in the paragraph itself. So again, this is the, if you remember the mantra I've been repeating of that your writing should be clear, concise, coherent, and cogent. Cogent means logically structured. So just as your essay should be logically structured with an introduction and a body and a discussion and, and all the other sections that may be required, each paragraph should also have a logical, um, clear structure within the paragraph itself. One easy way to do this is to start your paragraph with a topic sentence and then follow that with evidence, analysis, and results that support and develop your main idea. You can certainly have variations on this, um, you know, just like music, just like art. There's no hard and fast rules, but this is a great guideline to help you ensure you have clear, uh, clearly structured paragraphs. Now, there's a very simple mnemonic that can help you remember this. It's called the pair approach. PAIR stands for point, evidence, analysis, and response. So your topic, your paragraph is typically going to start with a point. That's your topic sentence. And this should be clear and direct. Then you're going to describe or present some evidence. And remember our previous work on this, that you're going to want to paraphrase and summarize research and quote selectively. Next, you're usually going to have some type of analysis. This is where you're explaining relationships between the evidence that you presented. Uh, you can also be comparing, contrasting, or evaluating the ideas that you have described in the evidence section of the paragraph. Then lastly, at the end is where you're going to have your response. The response is, explains how the analysis you presented illuminates the point. Uh, it tell, and, and it's also where you can tell us why your analysis matters or how your analysis matters to the paragraph you're working on, to the section, or to the overall essay. 
Okay, let's use this example from the United Nations refugee webpage. I think this is a really good, clear example of a paragraph that basically follows the pair approach. So to take a look at it here, I'm going to illuminate it using these colors that we've established in the previous slide. You can see that the first sentence highlighted in purple there is the point. The world is witnessing the highest levels of displacement on record. Then they present some evidence. An unprecedented 70.8 million people around the world have been forced from home by conflict and persecution at the end of 2018. Next comes some analysis. Now you could see part of this sentence as, you could see this next sentence possibly as evidence. I'm gonna call it analysis. Among them are nearly 30 million refugees, over half of whom are under the age of 18. It's giving you a little more understanding of the evidence and it's trying to explain some details within it. There are also millions of stateless people who have been, also, who have been denied a nationality and access to basic rights such as education, healthcare, employment, and freedom of movement. To my eye, the section I've highlighted in green is the response. This tells you why the point matters. It tells you why the evidence matters. And as you can see, it does it in this way that starts with a clear, concise topic sentence or key point, supports it with some evidence, a little bit of analysis or description of the evidence, and then a response that tells you why this matters. So I want to talk for a minute or two about writing sentences because, of course, clear sentences are a key ingredient to writing clear paragraphs. Panic tells us that a sentence, a good sentence in a policy essay is a sentence that is easy for your audience to read. So where they can understand who is doing what. Or I should say that, that the point Panic's making here is that a sentence is easy to read when your audience can understand who is doing what. And what this means is, he, so he's got three principles that kind of explain what this means in more detail. The first principle that he talks about is characters make good subjects. The second principle is that actions make good verbs. And the third principle is that you wanna choose your words widely, wisely. So to just talk a little bit more about what these mean, I would say, I mean, a tip that I would offer is to use active voice when you're trying to write your topic paragraph. And Pennock talks about it in the sense of ensuring that your character, which is the institution or person, or sometimes idea that's the kind of key um, uh, subject of the verb matches, or I'm sorry, subject of the sentence, that the character matches the subject. That's the way uh, Pennock phrases it. Um, he also talks about, uh, sorry, let me, let me go to the second one. He also talks about uh, how to make a good, clear verb and how to create a good, clear action in your sentence. And what he talks about is using active verbs instead of nominalized forms of verbs. So I want to just pause here. This is a key uh, trap that policy writers often stumble into, which is we take a verb like argue and we talk about it in this nominalized or gerundized form like argument. Uh, we take a verb like pass, the legislature will pass a bill and we say the passage of the bill will do X and Y and Z. So what Panak recommends is trying to avoid these nominalized forms and just using good, clear, active verbs. And then finally, the last tip is to choose your words wisely. Um, I've talked about uh, this to some of my students, which is that in policy, we wanna use appropriate vocab vocabulary that is clear and avoids hype. Um, you don't wanna be using a lot of kind of adjectives and colorful language. I mean, you wanna use the, those things sparingly. They can be helpful to get your point across, but in general, we wanna use straightforward, clear vocabulary and avoid hype. And I'd, I'd also add that if you want to introduce technical terms, sometimes they can be important. You want to define these technical terms and explain them. And you want to make sure that any technical terms you introduce are important for actually moving your argument forward. If they're not, then just avoid them and use clear, simple language. Moving from sentences to paragraphs. 
Panic reminds us that readable paragraphs are both cohesive and coherent. And even though these words sound the same as he discusses, they're a little bit different. So cohesive paragraphs stick together. They're made of tightly linked sentences where each sentence is kind of leading you into the next sentence or idea. Coherent paragraphs tell a story that is structured and consistent with your overall structure of the outline or section or um, assignment you're working. So one, one tip that, that Pennock offers here is, which I think is well uh, demonstrated in that UN example, is that you wanna begin sentences with familiar information and then proceed to new or complex information. So I would say begin sentences with simple or familiar information and then proceed to new and complex information. And if you think about the UN example, they started with a simple assertion that there's a record amount of di displaced people around the world, and then they explained what that means and provided more detail. So in terms of ensuring your paragraphs are coherent and tell the story that follows your outline or supports your outline, Pennock recommends using a topic sentence and keeping each paragraph focused on one idea. And I would just reinforce that by saying that in policy writing, it's okay to have short, punchy paragraphs um, and that you wanna break up big blocks of text because it just makes it easier to read. So my tip for you is to start with a small paragraph when you're leading off a section and then break up large blocks of text with additional paragraphs or if you're staying on the same topic with bullets or some other type of break like that. Again, the goal here is to give the reader's eye a visual break to guide the reader's eye to the important information and to, to basically force the reader to do as little work as possible and to create the most amount of understanding in the reader with as little work as possible. Okay, let me provide this second example here, which is kind of, I think, shows you some of the drawbacks of policy writing. So this is from the uh, International Organization on uh, Refugee um, Migration, or International Organization on Migration. They say, in 1990, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change noted that the greatest single impact of climate change could be on human migration, with millions of people displaced by shoreline erosion, coastal flooding, and agricultural disruption. Since then, various analysts have tried to put numbers on future flows of climate migrants, sometimes called climate refugees, the most widely repeated prediction being 200 million by 2050. Now, I don't know about you, I kind of get what they're saying, but I find this paragraph a little difficult. There's several reasons why. Uh, they're starting with a source that has a long name, the IPCC. I don't think that's very important, really, um, to, to the topic paragraph in the executive summary of the report, which is what we're looking at. And then they kind of give you some definitional information and they kind of hedge and, and provide some other breaking um, uh, punctuation with these dashes, which, which usually I love using M dashes to, to break up thoughts, but in this case, I find they kind of break up the flow and make this uh, paragraph needlessly complicated. So let's first kind of illuminate this within the pair framework and see how it looks. So as you can see, the portion of this paragraph I've highlighted in purple is what I think is the key point or what should be the topic sentence. The greatest single impact of climate change could be on human migration. So if I were gonna rewrite this, I would start with that. To me, this part highlighted in green is the response. It's telling you why this information or evidence matters, right? Millions of people displaced by shoreline erosion, coastal flooding and agricultural disruption. And then again, from my read of this, the Analysis is in the, within this, um, you know, within this parentheses and the evidence is kind of stuck here at the end. So let me show you how I would rewrite this using the pair framework and using the principles that we've just discussed. I would do it like this. I would start with what's in purple. The greatest single impact of climate change could be on human migration. 
Now, the, they are trying to bring out that, um, they're trying to locate this within the research. So I do include this, this, this clause since work began this issue in the 1990s, but I note that it's, it's not really critical to your initial understanding. They could easily move this down into a second paragraph and locate this debate within the research and talk about the IPCC and, and the other research that they do. To me, the evidence is what's highlighted in light blue. Researchers have determined that there could be 200 million climate, migra climate migrants, sometimes called climate refugees, by 2050. And the analysis is there um, at the end. Um, I, I see actually there's a little bit of a contradiction between these two, um, the two ways I've cut this up, but I could, I could see that as analysis or perhaps a response, right? It's, it's explaining why this matters. So in fact, I would, if I was going to redo this, I would highlight what's in dark blue and green, because to me, that's telling you why the information we've discussed matters. You, but you could also see it as providing a little bit of analysis or a little more detail about the evidence. Nonetheless, I think the key point is that rewriting the paragraph in this way makes it clearer and more effective and easier for your reader to understand. Okay, the last point that Pennock makes, um, I think this is in chapter four, is that he talks about the importance of understanding how paragraphs fit into the larger sections of your essay. And obviously, if you're just writing a paragraph or two, this is not very important, but when you're writing longer assignments, always thinking about and locating the paragraphs within your sections and then the sections within the essay is gonna help and create what Penna calls global cohesion, which helps the reader understand how the sections fit together. So to ensure global cohesion, Penna recommends that each section's intro paragraph should link back to the key goals of the paper. I would also point out that sometimes it could provide an overview of the section um, and some, some sense of structure. Either way, when you're starting a new section, you want to pay particular attention to that intro paragraph. The other point that Pennock brings up is that the end of, you can use the end of a section to reinforce key messages and then make connections between sections or between the section you're in and the essay or introduce the next section in the essay. Um, I'm going to give you this little tip of reminding you that subheads are your friend. It's fine in policy writing to break up long essays by using subheads as long as they're clear, concise, and add value and insight. And I think it's perfectly okay to have a subhead with three paragraphs or a couple hundred words, again, depending on the context of the assignment that you're working on. And I would just use the example of something like this map, which you can see on the right side of your screen. So this is a kind of historic map of Los Angeles without any place names. Right, so the structure is there. It's just that it's not perhaps very clear, especially to a reader who's coming to this map for the first time. If you don't know the Los Angeles area, you might not realize that Palos Verdes is on the bottom there and you might not really know what you're looking at. So if I kind of replace that with a similar map uh, taken from Google Maps that has place names and labels the roads, you see you can suddenly locate yourself within this map a lot more quickly. So just to remind you, uh, if you want to write good, clear paragraphs, you have to have clear prompts or a clear outline. You need to ensure you have good evidence and you need to start with clear sentences. Once you build those sentences into clear paragraphs, you want to think about how those paragraphs are fitting together. And then that will lead you into creating clear sections and clear essays and it will lead you to success in the program and success in your professional endeavors. So I'll just highlight again that Pennock chapter three and four are excellent. They go into all these points in more detail and they provide um, some excellent examples. And that the USC uh, library has a great uh, guide of, called Preparing to Write. It's, it's targeted toward academic writing of social science papers, but I still think it's very useful to those of us in public policy. Hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.